Dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, it is a marvelous fact of history that St. Thomas, one of the twelve disciples of Jesus Christ, came to the Malabar coast and witnessed to the message, life, death and resurrection of his master and founded the church in Malabar. Let us thank God for the continued existence of the church in India and also for the privilege of sharing and witnessing to the good news of salvation. What was the mystery of upholding the faith for the last 21 centuries? Definitely it was the beautiful sharing of the gospel truth from parents to children, from generation to generation. It is very apostolic in origin, orthodox in faith, democratic in principle, episcopal in nature, evangelical in outlook. When we thank God for the same, we have also to realize that it is the responsibility of the Church of this generation to preserve and communicate these precious treasures to our times. With this goal, the Delhi Diocese of the Marthama Church has prepared this documentary. It is our sincere hope and desire that this will be of help to the emerging generations as well as to the communities at large. With immense pleasure and thanksgiving, we, the spiritual children of the Delhi Diocese, dedicate this documentary to the Most Reverend Dr. Philippos Mar Chrysostom, Marthoma Metropolitan, the 20th Marthoma of the Malangara Church, on his 90th birthday. <laughs> In the beginning was the Word, the Word which is beginningless and eternal. The Word was God. All things were created through Him. In him was life. This life was the light of the world. And this light shines in the darkness. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. It was through the word, the ordinances of the Almighty were fulfilled in history. Go, you, and to the ends of the earth, and bear witness to my name. The faith community of today is the successor of those who imbibed and obeyed this ever-relevant ordinance of the Lord. St. Thomas, one of the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, 
had the responsibility to fulfill this mission in India and around. By the year 1852, St. Thomas reached the Malabar coast, crossing the seas of great sacrifices. The famous port city of the Chera Empire, Kranganur at those times was known as Muziris. Many traders from Palestine of West Asia during those times used to come over to Muziris to buy spices, especially pepper, which was also known as Yavana Priya. India, the birthplace of Hindu, Buddha and Jain religions, had the habit of heartfully welcoming different ideologies and philosophies. A community of Jews, who spoke Aramaic, the mother tongue of Jesus and the Apostles coexisted with other religious groups here at that time already. The inquisitiveness to know about them might have motivated St. Thomas to reach here in a trading sea vessel. There is another tradition that St. Thomas visited the Indo-Parthian kingdom of Gonda Forest as an expert architect. The natives who had the concept of Ishta Devta had worshipped everything that terrified them. The gospel of the living God was a new message to them. Like the new heaven and the new earth of hope and relief. It is the tradition that the Apostle blessed and founded Eirarapalligal in Malankara. Churches bent centers of worshipping community. Then churches were the fellowships of those who heard the gospel of truth. Among the churches he founded, the primary position goes to Krangano otherwise known as Malingara. Palayur is a place near Trichur. Another church was founded here. was offered up by the saint, remained in the atmosphere. The Brahmin priest who witnessed this miracle is said to have accepted the faith then and there. The Brahmin families, namely Pagalomatam, Shankarapuri and so on, who had rich heritage of ordained priesthood hails from this place. This church existed in North Parur, which in olden times was also known as Kotakav, Kotakail, and Parayur, and so on. In the old documents, this church was known as Kakamangalam. This church is at Pallipuram near Ernakulam. This beautiful village is on the bank of the lake Vembanada. Nelkinda or Nirinam is believed to be a region came out of the sea.
the architectural style of this church resembles the hindu temple architecture the mother church at kollam which is considered as one among the eight republics founded by saint thomas might have been drowned in the sea in the ancient documents this church center is referred to as kurakeni kollam kaulam male and so on and this church now represents that old tradition This place was known from ancient times as Nilakil or Chail. The church existed here was destroyed in 1314 due to many conflicts. This new church in the name of St Thomas was dedicated on the 8th of April 1984 as the first joint venture of the Roman Catholic the Orthodox the Jacobite the Mahatma the Knanaya and CSA churches Nilakal church has its uniqueness as the first ecumenical church in the world this is the only church in the whole world wherein different christian denominations claiming apostolic succession from St Thomas can celebrate the holy eucharist on the same altar this green forest area is near to shabarimala the renowned hindu pilgrim center in the delta region of the river pampa and the river kakkat and before crossing the sahyadri mountains carrying the message of love the apostles founded one more community this church is considered the arapalli the capital of erstwhile state of travancore this is an argument among the scholars that ara the malayalam for half denotes respect also as in the case of aramana which means palace in that way Yerapalli is only a respectful term for the churches the apostle founded Before leaving for the Coromandel coast the apostle arrived at Malayatur surrounded by rivers and forest Due to the opposition of the local people he could not fulfill his plan Nevertheless he resorted to intimate union with his master and lord the lord jesus in prayer and fasting on the mountain top nearby the people around here believe that there exist the footprints of saint thomas on the rock which attracts pilgrims in large numbers every year Mailapur in Tamil Nadu is a sacred place where St Thomas made his footprints. The apostle who exhorted other disciples to die for his Lord and God finished his race and mission here. He died at Mailapur. The saint who was stabbed and killed by a fanatic was laid to eternal rest here. His martyrdom was in AD 72. In remembrance of his martyrdom, December 21 is observed as the church day or Sabha dinam.
During those times, the church in India was given spiritual nurture and leadership by the ecclesiastical heads visited here from Babylon. The arrival of Pantinus from Alexandria in the year AD 189 enhanced the status and prestige of Christians in the society. This reality is historically testified by the events that followed. The then Kerala sovereign Veera Rakhava conferred on Eravikorthan, who was the chief among the Kerala Christians then, the title Chairman Loka Perinjati, and 18 other privileges. From the coronation of Emperor Constantine in the year AD 312, Christianity became the official free religion in the Roman Empire. The impacts of the same were felt worldwide. The council at Nicaea in the year AD 325 formed and coined the creed for the universal church affirming the faith in the Holy Trinity. The records show that a bishop named John from India also attended the Nicene Council. Religious persecutions broke out in Persia in the 4th century. A group of 400 under the leadership of Thomas of Cana, who was a prominent tradesman and chieftain, migrated to Crankano in AD 345 to protect and safeguard their holy faith. Bishop Yosef from Uraha and his deacons also accompanied them to cater to their spiritual needs and that became a blessing to Malankara in turn. The local people held this group who practiced the profession of the Vaishya clan in high esteem. People from this community never entered into matrimonial alliance with other ethnic groups. The Persian cross and the writings in the ancient language of Pali, seen in the Kotium Valiapalli, are the visible proofs of the strong relationship Malankara had with Persia. There was a belief among the locals that the oil offered in the temples will be sanctified by the touch of the Christians. The local kings also held the Christians in high esteem. By AD 425, Nestor became the patriarch of Constantinople. He held the divinity and the humanity of Jesus Christ separately. The impact of this faith was seen in Malankara also. The Chaldean Church, which exists in Trishur and its neighborhood, continues to hold on to this faith tradition. Our church is known as Chaldean Syrian Church locally or Church of the East. We are also known as Assyrian Church because we are under the patriarch of the Assyrian Church, but our headquarters is Iraq, Iran area. Our church is a part of the whole Syrian Christian community in India. But in Trichur, this is the oldest church. Because after the attack of Tipu Sultan, the Shaktan Dambira and Maharaja of Cochin brought Christian families, 52 Christian families, to Trichur. And then later, another king built a church for us. This is the faithful remnant of the pre-Portuguese Syrian Christianity uh, in India. The Malankara church used to receive the Nestorian bishops and Syrian bishops without hesitations. By the middle of the 7th century, Islam originated in West Asia. When the Muslims conquered and established their dominion in Krangano, the Christians had to retreat to Angamali. As the church and the town were constructed at Angamali, that became a stronghold of ancient Christianity. Kerala Christians had good relationship with the Hindu kings 
and local chieftains. Kaladi, the birthplace of Shankaracharya, the protagonist of Advaita philosophy, is close to Malayatur, a famous Christian pilgrim center in Kerala. The second migration of Persian Christians to Malangara was in the year 825. This large community of Christians under the leadership of Marwan Sabarijo, including Bishops Mar Sapro and Mar Proth, came to Kollam, which was a great commercial center at that time. Ayyanadigal, the then king of Venad, gave this bronze tablet to those Christians. These bronze edicts are known as Tarishapalli edicts. These tablets contain the special privileges granted to the Christian church at Tarishapalli. Through this edict, the Christians were given 72 privileges. The privileges included the right to possess slaves, Arapura, Padipura, and so on. The beginning of the Kolla version is ascribed to this migration of the Persians to Kollam. The kings and local chieftains liked the Christians because of their interest in serving the kingdom. They were very good at martial arts and the like. The prestige and power of the Nazarenes were increasing in Malankara. Kings began to honor them with special titles like Mapila, Tarakan, Panikir and so on. By the 10th century, a Christian dynasty named Vilyarvatum was founded basing at Daimpur. The Vilyarvatum kings, wearing pink turbans and long staff mounted on elephants, was a joy to their eye. In due course of time, this dynasty came to its end. Because of the peculiar political situations of the time, the land route Europe had with the Malabar coast was blocked. This affected trade in spices. In this situation, the valiant efforts to discover a new sea route to Malabar coast from the west became successful under the leadership of sailor and trader Vasco da Gama. The great valiant sailor Vasco da Gama reached at Kapad near Calicut in 1498 after a historic sea voyage of 317 days. Along with Vasco da Gama, the Roman Catholic faith and practices also came to Malankara. Portuguese tried to enforce Roman Catholic faith and practices in Malankara, forgetting the historic fact that the church in Malankara was a well-founded Episcopal church. Opposition to the Roman Catholic practices was seen in different parts of the world. From 1529, the word Protestant was used to qualify the reformers in Christianity. With the advent of the Portuguese, there was rapid progress in agriculture sector also. The Portuguese introduced cashew, pineapple, tobacco, and many other agricultural crops in Kerala. They took initiative for the construction of churches and fortresses. The Portuguese who had made a political empire by this time made Goa their capital. They made great influence and impact in every walk of life within half a century. The Portuguese were irritating and offending the Malankara bishops in spite of their credentials from the Patriarch of Antioch. 
by the year 1542 Francis Xavier the great missionary arrived in Goa with the patronage of the Portuguese empire the portuguese in india gave him great support he was a zealous enthusiastic missionary that he could rightly be called the second apostle of india reverend robert d nobley who arrived at madurai in 1605 also did worthy mission activity he took up the native practices of punur kuduma pottu and so on and thereby initiated the process of indianization and inculturation to evangelization in spite of the manifold missionary activities the portuguese in india were very much upset about the intimate relationship the syrians had with the middle eastern christian communities During those times the concept of common cemeteries sprang up among the Malangara Christians and this increased the solidarity between the members of the church When Alexis de Menezes assumed the charge as the archbishop of Goa the gulf between the Roman Catholic Church and the Syrians widened Archdeacon Gavogis who was the leader of the Syrian Christians in Malangara also did whatever he could to defend the advances of archbishop menesis as the archdeacon was not submissive the impatient archbishop menesis came in person to malankara in 1599 influencing the king of kochi on the pretext of solving the problems he convened a synod at dimper the archdeacon also was compelled to attend it 133 clergy 20 deacons and 660 lay representatives attended the week long synod the synod was only a venue to enforce the unilateral decisions of the archbishop even the syrian taxa had to be modified as per the roman catholic faith and practices Many valuable historical documents of the Malankara church were put to fire. Archdeacon Thomas, who assumed the position by that time, was determined to keep alive the flame of Eastern Syrian tradition. He sought help from different patriarchs. Responding to his request, the bishop sent from Babylon Mar Ahatala was imprisoned and persecuted by the Portuguese. This was something beyond the endurance of the Malankara people. About 25,000 people under the leadership of Archdeacon Thomas marched to Kochi where Mar Ahatala was kept in custody subsequently to be exiled to Goa. The Portuguese prepared themselves to face the marching crowd with cannons and bullets archdeacon and the group sensing the futility of fighting against the armed portuguese withdrew to the old church compound at matanjeri it was here they took a vow that they and the generations to come will have nothing to do with the papacy of the Kunan Cross on the 3rd of Makaram 1653 became historic in this respect holding the ropes to all directions tied to the stone built cross they made this historic oath by this oath the malankara syrian christians were liberated from the roman yoke which had a duration of 50 years Those who made the declaration of independence were known as Putan Kutigar. They gathered at the church at Alangat, and Thomas the Archdeacon was consecrated as Metropolitan by twelve clergy of the church. As the consecration was done without the laying of hands of a bishop, it was seen imperfect, 
This imperfection was rectified when the first Mathoma received the laying of hands from Mar Gregorius of Jerusalem in the same year. Within a short time, the Dutch defeated the Portuguese and established their dominion in the Malabar region. And this became favorable for the Syrians. The valiant leaders of the church who led her during those turbulent times have their final resting places near the ancient churches where history itself is recorded. The first Mathoma who was consecrated in the year 1653 to the ninth Mathoma who passed away in 1817 had their consecration from the patriarchs or by their predecessors. Katumangatu Marcurilos was consecrated in 1772. This consecration was not acceptable to Mar Dionysius, who was the then Malangara Metropolitan. Marcurilos had to retreat to Thoriur near Trichur, a province in British Malabar, because of many a reason. The Malabar Independent Syrian Church, otherwise known, the Thoriur Church was founded here. Reverend Dr. Claudius Buchanan, who was the chaplain of the British East India Company, pioneered with some efforts to spread the light of the gospel through literary activities. He suffered a lot to publish the four gospels in Malayalam according to the wishes of Mar Dionysius VIII. When Colonel Macaulay was the resident, he invested about 3,000 Pubarahans or about 10,500 rupees with East India Company the interest of which was to be given to the Malankara Church. This is known as Vattipanam. This fund became the cause of the notorious Vattipana case in the Malankara Church later on. During those times, Pelutambi Dalava was the ruler in Travancore. His rivalry to the British was reflected in his relationship with the native Christians also. When Colonel Munro was the resident in Travancore, he invited the CMS or the Church Missionary Society to Malankara to make a difference in the pitiable conditions of the Malankara Church. The old seminary was founded in 1813 by the keen interest taken by Colonel Munro. The schools attached to the old seminary were also his contribution. Responding to the invitation of the resident, Reverend Benjamin Bailey, who succeeded the early CMS missionaries, concentrated his attention in the translation of the scriptures into Malayalam. Printing in Malayalam was also made possible by his sacrificial efforts. Dr. Herman Guntat, the multilinguist and Malayalam grammarian, was a missionary of the Basel Mission. Reverend Joseph Fenn concentrated in clergy training. Henry Baker paid his attention to education. Village schools were his idea. Even though the CMS missionaries did meritorious things for the Malabar church, 
their interferences in certain areas were not acceptable to the newly consecrated metropolitan Chepat Mar Dionysius. The Synod of Mavelikara in 1836, which approved the decree known as the Mavelikara Padiola, finally rejected the proposals of the missionaries to reform the church. Thus ended the 20-year-long relationship the Syrian church had with the missionaries. The old seminary and its compound and the Vatipanam came under the custody and control of the Malankara Metropolitan as per the mutual agreement.